Hi guys, how are you doing? Dan from OnlineBaseCourses.com. I did two quick videos for beginners, just some tips, uh, two technical exercises, the benefits of knowing your notes all over the bass. And this one is some really simple oxive patterns that can help you navigate the bass a lot easier. So in that intro there, I was just messing around with some octaves around E. So have a look at this picture and I'll explain some of the patterns to you. So you have an open string E and on a bass, wherever you can, if you can go two frets across and two strings downwards towards the floor, you find the next note one octave higher. Don't worry too much if you don't know what an octave is, it doesn't matter too much for now. But so if you go two frets across from the open E string, so to the second fret, and then drop two strings across, you've found the next E. So we can do that in many places on the bass. Uh, if you didn't watch the notes video, I recommend doing that because if you know, I mentioned that the fifth fret of the A string is a D. Okay, so if you know that's a D and we need an E, an E is very close to a D. So if you don't know notes, that won't make much sense. So I do recommend it. Anyhow, we have an E on the seventh fret of the E string. And we can do that exact same pattern. So we go two frets across, two strings down, and we'll find the next highest E. Now this means if you know this pattern, and I'm playing this, by the way, with my first finger on the seventh fret of the A string, and I'm using my little finger for the octave higher instead of my third. I mean, you can use your third. It's a little bit of a stretch. The wrist is a lot straighter if you do it this way. Loads and loads of bass lines use octaves. What's that? Uh, my Sharona, which is on G actually. Uses just an octave pattern. So what else do we have here? We've got the open string to the second fret of the D string, which we did. We've got the octave pattern here. Here's another good octave pattern to know. It's this time if you put your little finger on the 12th fret of the E, and this time we go three frets back towards the neck and then three strings. So you can only do this if you're on the E string, going to the G string. But there's another octave pattern there. And that's particularly useful if you're playing, for example, and let's see, if you're doing an E major pentatonic scale and you're going from the 12th fret of the E string and then after that, I'm going frets, what's that, seven, eight, nine to 11 on the A, the D and the G strings. You've got an octave pattern under your fingers there. It's not as easy to play as these other two, but it's handy to know because if you're here, you're not restricted to what you can play. You know that you can end up on an E here, and you can just be more creative if you know patterns in every direction. And then from the E, we've got another pattern, two across, two across, that two across, two across pattern one. You see that a lot. Then we have patterns within patterns. Second fret of the D string is that E again. And if you go to the next string, the G string, and you go across eight frets, you've got another octave, and that's great for kind of... to doing slides and things like that. So if you know octave patterns, then you can instantly locate, for example, E's all over the neck really, really easily just by navigating patterns. So we've got the one that's two across, two across, and if I'm on this high E on the G string, I know that I can flip back and I've got another E here, another E here using that same pattern. On this bass, I can't go eight frets across because I run out, but some basses, you would have another E octave here. So it's a very, very quick way of navigating the fretboard. And then if you learn scales and patterns, in the intro, I was just playing octaves. You can make music just simply from octaves, but 
if you know some of the patterns around that, then you can start to fill in the gaps a lot more. So the next video I'm going to do in this little series is talking about that a little bit, talking about intervals, octave being an interval. So I'll talk about intervals and how you might make some bass lines using that. So please like, subscribe the video. If you like this, comment in the box below if you want any kind of videos a bit like this. But as I said, the next one's going to be intervals. So, so tune in for that one. Cheers, guys.